Thank you everyone for still being here. I hope you've had a fantastic afternoon. I can see some amazing uh, companies representing the creative arts across West London here. So thank you for all of them. Excuse me, sorry, I drank too much Coca-Cola before I came on stage. Um, all right, so this is the final panel discussion of the day. Um, I think it's gonna be a really interesting one for anyone who is starting out in their journey and their career in the creative sector, if it's film, TV, if it's production of any sort, if you wanna work in front of the camera, behind the camera, beside the camera, above the camera. I don't know if there are many jobs below the camera, but w I'm sure there are. Then this is, this is definitely the panel discussion for you. So joining me on stage, we have Lenina Afori, who are uh, author and writer. There we go. We have uh, Pauline Hudson, who is a uh, film and TV and advertising makeup artist and now uh, a college lecturer. Yeah, kind of, yeah, college, yeah. A college lecturer. And last but most certainly not least, we have Jasmine Nunes, who is a director and worked on the production of Law and Order, which I'm sure many of you know. So thank you. Thank you for joining me. So we're going to start off. Um, so when we contemplate the journey into production and where you are now, how did you get started and, and what was your motivation for joining the industry? Go on, go on, Lenina, you start. Yeah, hi. Um, and remember, we've only got 20 minutes. Is that <laughs> <laughs> no, I started off, um, I studied like English Lit and Theatre Studies 22 years ago. Um, but my background was always theatre, so I done a master's about 12 years ago at Royal Central, and it was um, applied theatre and criminal justice. So I always wanted to do writing or arts in the social justice sphere, but um, I didn't know like what my next steps were kind of thing. I was doing lots of community theatre, a lot of theatre for change. I've done some directing for national theatre, but I really wanted more to move into film and storytelling for systems change, which I do now. Um, and I think I pivoted because I realised the vulnerabilities of theatre as well, and also the reach that television, um, film and TV has when you want to talk about social issues, of course you can reach much more people if you're in TV and film. So that was one of my biggest motivations, really, to be honest. Fantastic. And Ruth, so, you know, sorry, Pauline, go on. <laughs> Definitely you need some more caffeine. Sorry, Pauline. So uh, how about you? So you're think, thinking back to when you were like starting off, you know, industry was exciting and fresh and there was no cynicism and you're like, come on, let's do this. What, what, yeah. what, where were you then? Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, I have to say, you know, all of those years ago, and it was a very, very long time ago, um, the world was a different place. Um, believe it or not, social media didn't exist. <laughs> um, I knew as a young person, you know, finishing school, thinking about what my options were, I knew I loved art. Um, I knew I wanted to be creative. I also loved live theatre performance, and I loved history. Um, and I think I just took all of those, combining them together, um, and kind of looked at how I could combine them. You know, could it be costume? Could it be hair? Could it be makeup? I had an interest in, in everything. Um, that resulted in me then taking some short courses over the summer, which led on to the, me then taking um, longer courses, originally at the London College of Fashion, and then into another school, which um, was a private provider at the time. Really, that springboarded me into then working on things such as student films, um, and as a um, lecturer, and I oversee performing and production arts at West Thames College today, um, this is what I tell, I suppose, our young people. We're teaching the new generation of people, and I tell them that, you know, it's all about that networking, and whilst I know young people now use social media to do that, um, it's all about coming to events like such as this, talking to people, getting your face out there. And that's exactly what I done as a young person, kind of, you know, 30 odd years ago. Um, and from there, it grew really. Um, and then, you know, that journey kind of took me various places. And I'll tell you more on another question. <laughs> no, no, that's great. And Jasmine, so here you are to inspire everyone here about your journey. How did it start? And why, importantly, did you start it? Great question. Uh, I took an unconventional path to filmmaking and where I am right now. My, for my filmmaking career, I was studying 
neuroscience at American University. And I've always had a pension for film. And one summer break, I decided to apply to a summer documentary course in Beaconsfield. So I came over, took the course. I realized this is the thing that I want to do. And I don't want to squander any more time. So I continued taking courses and film courses in London. Um, yeah. And here I am now. And I've worked in New York. So my career in the AD department and working on a professional film set, Law and Order, started by me coming back from New York, uh, back from London to New York after COVID, and walking by a film truck and not having any connections in New York, struggling. I said, you know, I bite it, bit the bullet and said, here I go. Went to the film truck, spoke with the camera crew, asked for a member of production learned how to use a walkie, which is the main mode of communication on set that same night, joined production the next day, and was subsequently staffed on for the whole season about a month later. I think that just sends the message of, if you want something, be resilient, and if you just show up and have enthusiasm, learn, listen, be able to make mistakes and bounce back from it, that you could really do anything. And my motivation for being in the industry and being a filmmaker is I feel like, I feel we're the predicated, due to the predicated proposition that we are in a watershed period in the filmmaking industry where different types, uh, it illuminates the fact, the need for diverse stories to be told, minorities to be seen in front of and behind the camera in multiple different narratives and the critically acclaimed uh, films that we see today and that we've seen in the past decades only represent a certain narrative and minorities face the same struggle, love, mental strife as any of their non-minority counterparts and to bring illumination to that and I vow to make that mark of the film industry. That's fantastic. I mean, that's a great journey. What a, you know, you, that, I think there are a few things I've heard throughout from the panel. One is you had something that motivated you. There was a why behind it. It wasn't just you wanted to make a film. Exactly. There was a real passion, a burning desire to either make change, to explore and discover what you could do, or you realized it was like your heart's desire. And you know, for me, I think that's very important. If you, are, if you want to be successful in the film and TV sector or as a creative, you have to have that passion and that desire. You, you're absolutely right. You turn up on time. Be kind, be useful, know your subject, have, have a really good drive behind what you're doing, but make sure that passion is there because anyone who doesn't have that will probably fall by the wayside. Thank you, that was awesome stories. So, so what has been the hardest part of your journey? Um, I think the hardest part of my journey was like, I think there was the lack of representation, but I feel like I almost solved the problem myself. Um, because my background was theatre and I obviously wanted to move into film, I have a film production company called The Awareness Tap. And basically, we create films and shows that are able to speak to the counter narrative because everything that we hear about is the dominant narrative. So, just like Jasmine said, it's like, what are we hearing out there and what's being perpetuated, especially about black and brown people? Now that now we've got a production company, we're able to create the stories that we want to to see the things that we want to hear, the counter narrative, the things that we discuss at home that we don't, like we're wondering why are we not seeing enough of this? Um, and I think that was one of the hardest things. And also sometimes like this lack of research. So I'm a researcher, my, by trade, I'm doing a doctorate with a focus on storytelling for systems change. So that no, knowing that there wasn't that much real deep research, unless we're like looking back in the day, and sometimes it comes from America, like Spike Lee and Ava DuVernay, I wanted to see more of that. More storytelling that actually aims to impact, more storytelling that tells the truth and the different layers and the different stories and the nuance and the intersectionality that black people face. And I think the hardest thing was not seeing that and then like solving it in some way. So I don't think there's been a, a hardest part. I think there's a lot of things that we probably find hard as creatives, and it's usually it's bothering us because we are the people to solve the problem. 
So when, on the earlier panel, the EDI panel, you yes. must have been quite thrilled course, yeah. when you heard <laughs> the passion and the drive and of the, course, you know, the yeah. expectation. I think it's important to have expectation. Yeah. You know, we can't just go, well, it's okay. We can just push it a little bit. It's like, no, we have to aim up here. It's not, it's not good enough just to kind of hear, go here. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Like when I was listening to the panel, of course, I wanted to like say, and this and this, but I think um, there is work being done, but actually we're, we're going at a really slow pace. But those of us who are in like DEI work, I'm outside of filmmaking, I'm a consultant, so everything I'm doing is about race equity and it is about widening access and about like making sure that when we're, we're hearing narrative that it actually is the true narrative and it's not just what people are perpetuating about us. And I think when you look at DEI, even in the film, of course, it's a small portion of the work that needs to be done, not because the people aren't pushing at it, but because we're like centuries behind. It, and actually the system wasn't built for there to be DEI. And the fact that DEI exists is showing us there's a problem anyway, isn't there? No, that's, that's a fair point. Um, so Pauline. Hello. <laughs> hardest part of your journey. And mm. we've got one more question after this. So I'm gonna have to yeah. ask you both, just to like, you know, bullet point it for me. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think the hardest part of um, any journey of, I suppose, what we might call the more backstage roles, whether you're a costume designer, a, a lighting designer, a, a set designer, a makeup designer, I think it's the, it's the beginning. It's those first three to five years. It's about um, having the consistency of work, um, being able to stick with it, um, the resilience, your mental health in those times where the phone isn't ringing or you're not being booked. Um, you're still being able to get yourself up, get yourself out there, get your face seen and get your name known. Sticking with it and still having the same passion, bringing all of the soft skills, being adaptable, being able to communicate, presenting yourself in the correct way for the set of people that you want to go and work with. Um, fitting that piece of the jigsaw puzzle. If you do that consistently enough in those first few years, your work will come. It will happen, but you've got to get through that, that, that sticky beginning, I suppose. Absolute truth. And we've all, we've all been there, and you do have to have that perseverance. I'm going to... So, uh, Jasmine, what about you? So, you... you yeah. I'll, I'll give a brief. Uh, I would say uh, the hardest part about this chapter of my journey is time and time management. Since I am, when you're in season, working 70 hours a week for six months, you're working in a department that is correlated to what you want to do and what your dream is, as trite as it sounds, but you have to be able to carve the time as little as it has, just as little as it may be, to flex your creative muscles, to practice what you're doing and not lose sight within the, the stresses of production on where you want to go. Great. No, I think that's, that's a fair point, and that creative desire within all of us to be unique, make, tell stories that are important to us, that's why a lot of us get into the industry. You know, you, you want to tell a story which is pertinent, appropriate, socially challenging, and if you're running a, you know, a production, it's hard work, and that time quickly goes away. So I'd love to know how you manage that on a separate note. All right, well, listen. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we're going we're gonna to have to whiz through this. Um, and in fact, I'm going to scrap the third question because what I want to do is ask you to give me some examples of the way that the people in this room who want to start their journey into film and TV can do that. What are the top tips? What are the things that you think are most useful? Uh, Pauline, you've already kind of talked about resilience and perseverance. What would you add to that? Adaptability. Um, in every way, really. Whether that be in, in the way that you present yourself. Um, one day you're working on a pop video, you may be with um, you know, a group of young people that are 18 years old. You've got to fit that, um, that piece of that jigsaw puzzle, as I said earlier. But the next day you may be with a corporate company. Um, being prepared to travel, you might need to do that independently. Um, you know, you're not always picked up, you're not always, always with a group of people, you still need to get yourself to the job. Don't expect to finish, it's not nine to five. Even if the call time says it's nine to five, it often isn't. <laughs> um, just be prepared for that. So adaptability, I think, is really key. And you know, always having that smile on your face, really. Uh, keep, keep smiling. Keep 
so, smiling. Uh, yeah, Lalina, so what would, what would you give to the, the, the audience? What, was the, what is the big piece of advice? Um, I think a big piece of advice is actually, it's quite interesting even being here, is the way you treat people. And also like, I know a lot of people here will know the word clout and click. So people usually gravitate to people who like are very visible, etc. But there's so many people that you can build relationships with who are probably going to be an integral part of your journey. And actually you can bypass them because you're like, oh, they don't look as popular or they haven't got as much followers. But actually they've got the money to invest, they're exec producers, they um, have loads of knowledge, but you might not know about them. Um, also like be prepared to build relationships with people. So like, you know, like for example, you're networking here, for example, people want everything so quickly. So like you'll get someone's number, you're like jumping on it, oh, what can you do for me? But actually, what about a journey? I think it's really important, people don't understand that you need, in biz I run businesses, so I don't have the mindset of like everything has to be overnight, I have vision and like you build towards that. But I know when you've got a passion, especially at a creative, sometimes you want it to happen instantaneously, but relationships are key. Some of the relationships I made, like with people who are here, like Leone, like Thomas Howe, who owns Garden Studios, their relationships I built over years and years and conversations and emails, and we've done some amazing things together. So I think people should be careful like how they treat people on their journey. Yeah, it's, that's absolutely true. Having that ability to connect with people, give as well as look for opportunity, that will set you aside. So Jasmine, wrap up this fascinating, insightful, useful debate. Where are we going? What is your advice? My advice. I know you hear the advice very, very often. Just get out your phone, shoot something. Even if you want to write or direct, I highly, highly advise you stepping on a professional film set. I know it sounds like a very tall task, and I did it by, you know, walking on a camera truck and, you know, biting, biting the bullet and putting myself out there. And I'd suggest you guys do the same because no matter if you shoot a million films, short films with your friends, which is great, and you take rigorous courses at film schools, nothing will teach you like practical experiences. Every day on set, you learn something completely new because every day is completely new. You're facing, the challenges faced every day differ greatly, and without knowing now, it just gave me, Gave, being on set gave me so much more confidence as a filmmaker, so when I in the future could helm the film set, I'll know how the inner workings and intricacies of the set move. And I would not be able to know that and be that confident if I didn't work on a set. Brilliant, thank you. Thank you all, it's been brilliant, you, it's Chris. been insightful, and it's great to hear the consistency with the messages. You know, perseverance, determination, have, uh, have a meaning to what you're doing. Go out there, hustle for it, look for opportunity, network, be on time. I mean, these are, these are, some of these things are just simple. You know, put the effort in, try hard, have a direction, and you will eventually be successful. It's gonna be tricky at the start, and if it isn't, you're very lucky. But once you've got through that tricky bit, that is when you really start to reap the, re the rewards. So, uh, Lenina, Pauline, Jasmine, thank you very much. It's been great to have you on this panel and talk with you. Thank you very much. Thank you.